Hello everyone, and this set of videos we're going to explore how to achieve full marks for Edexcel English Literature A2. And what we're going to focus on is Paper 1, Section A in this series of videos. So let's have a brief overview of the structure of the qualification itself. So there are three exam papers, one piece of coursework. Paper 1 and Paper 3 are 30% and both 2 hours and 15 minutes in total. Paper 2 and your coursework make up 20% each. One is a one-hour examination, one is a comparison essay based across two different forms. So paper one then, so this is drama. Section A is focusing on Shakespeare, and you have a choice of a couple of questions here. Section B is another drama piece. So section A will focus on assessment objectives one, two, three, and five, whereas obviously section B, which is 25%, 25 marks rather, one, two, and three. So one, two, three, and five, what does that mean in terms of assessment objectives? Well. One is your ability to create a solid argument using terminology all the way through. Two is your ability to use form, structure and language to support your ideas. Three is your ability to link context to what you're saying. Five is explore different interpretations by different writers. So notice here that we're not being asked to compare for section A. This page, just well, if you case you're interested, is a breakdown in terms of the percentage of how the assessment objectives are weighted across your course. So let's see if you're revising then. How do you plan and how do you write this response? Pause this, note down your ideas, discuss your ideas. When you're ready, press play to resume. So, if we're going to achieve full marks here, well, 21 of the marks are for AL 1, 2, and 3. So, 1 to achieve level 5 is obviously creating a sophisticated argument which uses terminology to a sophisticated level all the way through. So, intelligent ideas, not just, not just basic ideas. Then, we need to make sure we understand how structure, form, and language support meaning in a sophisticated, intelligent way. We also need to make sure that we present and evaluate the significance of context. So how is context relevant? In addition, to get the remaining 14 marks for area 5, you need to make sure that you're also including the interpretations of others. So you should have been revising, you know, Bradshaw, etc., etc., and Coleridge, you know, looking at how the critical writers discuss and refer to, in section A at least, uh, Shakespeare's dramas. So that should already be work that you bring into the exam. And just more widely speaking, there should be nothing new in this exam for you because you should know your analysis, you should practice it already. You just need to make sure you're able in, on the day to copy your, your full mark ideas from brain and paste them onto your exam paper when you're ready. The planning itself, well obviously it's just a generic straight essay that you've been writing for so many years of your educational life now. Read the question carefully, making sure you underline the key parts so you understand your argument. Then you want to make sure you note down briefly what your answer is. That is the basis of your essay. Now we need to think about two, three, four reasons why you're correct, making sure to link structure, form, and language, context, and obviously alternative interpretations, which aren't just critics. It can be a feminist, a socialist, and Marxist perspective as well. Again, remember, planning is an important skill. So if you've not practiced planning, putting 10, 15, 20 minutes on your phone and just trying to write a plan from memory, you're not ready for this exam. Because otherwise, you're going to be flicking through the book, which is always extremely annoying, trying to find evidence. And chances are, you'll find it very difficult to find it. You'll only really be flicking in and out of the texts because you're trying to make sure you've got your quotation evidence perfectly right. Here's a question then. Explore Shakespeare's presentation of the female and a fellow. You must relate your discussion to relevant contextual factors and ideas for your critical reading. So looking for you to argue with or against the critics that you've worked with. Here's my planning. So you can see this is my debate, or a link to the idea of debate. I can also talk about it here as an example. The focus here is love rather than the female. So my presentation of the female here is unfair. I've got the presentation of it being a uh, female being unequal and dishonest, perhaps. Structure form of language is covered. Also link it to context. So what do we think about in terms of what an answer should look like? Well, let's look at that in our next video, shall we? Thank you.